Hey guys. So thank you for joining me today. Um, this ser- I hope you're doing well. This sermon is called A Lesson in Persistence. Let's pray. Father, I praise you for what you've done and for what you're about to do. Permeate the atmosphere, permeate my heart, permeate the hearts and spirit, the spirit of those around me. Fill my mouth with what you would have me say, what you would have me to. This time is yours, God. It's our time together, but ultimately it's your time. So we honor that and we honor you today. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, as many of you guys know, watching me for the past few years, um, I always like to tell stories about myself and about my life. <laughs> but this opening story um, to set up uh, the context for this sermon is really not mine. <laughs> um, you may not know that um, I like to, I attend online um, Elevation Church <laughs> and it's a great church to attend online if you're looking for a church or haven't found a church or or want to attend that church. There are many great churches online and many people say it's not the same but I think gathering together how we used to define it is not gathering together um, is not the only way to gather together. I think gathering together is more about um, the presence of God than the pr proximity of a person. So um, a person could, the people could worship together in the same building but be so far apart. But then you could get together online and feel so close with that community. So Elevation Church is the church community I attend online. I was in an e-group for a while. Um, I all kinds of things. So, but uh, so usually when I finish preaching here, I'm I'm attending church on YouTube. Like a lot of people say streaming church, but I don't count it as streaming church. It is technically streaming, but I just I just feel like I'm there. I feel the same presence and the same spirit. Anywho, the story I'm going to tell today is actually theirs. Anyway, don't worry, it's public knowledge. Everybody knows that it's been public. I'm not I'm not um, letting go of any uh, verdict secrets or anything. Um, okay, so I remember watching a sermon uh, called uh, Round Trip Resurrection in like, what, 2017? Uh, it was part of his, uh, part of Pastor Stephen Furtick's uh, Seven Mile Miracle series. Anyway, before I get into the actual uh, story, I should explain what Elevation Church is. Elevation Church is a church uh, that has many locations, but its broadcast location is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, they started in Sh in Shelby in 2006, Shelby, North Carolina in 2006, and now 
the church has grown exponentially. And like I said before, um, it's pastored by uh, St Pastor Stephen Furtick and his wife, Holly Furtick. Um, and I've belonged to the church for about three years. And um, I think four years, something like that. Um, I also belong to Holly's Book Club. I've said many times on here that I belong to a book club. That's the book club I belong to, the Holly Furtick Book Club. Um, I, I also was in an e-group for a while until it got uh, too hard for me to... I was doing too many things at, at one time, so I'm not, not a part of an e-group anymore, just simply because I'm so so busy with a, with my own ministry stuff, it was hard to kind of go and find the time. And, uh, and I believe the Lord released me to leave. So any, anywho, that's the church. But the story now. So I was watching, I was watching a sermon uh, by by Pastor Stephen in 2017. Uh, and Pastor Stephen, like like me, always likes to tell stories. He talks about, he's a very conversational preacher. Um, and he has a very unique way of uh, bringing the word into life. And he loves to tell stories about his family. So he has three kids. So um, his first son is... His name is Elijah, and Elijah is 16. Uh, his second son, Graham, is 13, and his daughter, Abby, she's 11. So, I, I was watching <laughs> Round Trip Resurrection. Uh, it was part of his Seven Mile Mir Miracle series. And in that series, um, he was talking about, um, it was all about the, se uh, the seven miles that uh, Jesus took uh, to the cross. But in that story is the first time I heard about his, his uh, children wanting a dog and, and and he was like, no. And he said uh, his son came up with this cute little song about uh, about how much he loved his dad. And at the end of the song, uh, and I'll, at the end of the song, it says, "Cause he's gonna get me a dog." <laughs> and so. That was the first time I heard about the dog thing in that sermon. And sermons through the years, uh, he he mentioned, oh, my children are, are just really after me to get a dog for the family. And, um, uh, and he says, now, now my wife Holly agrees with them, so... It's just me and Elijah that says that say no. Uh, I don't want a dog, so so um so it was like he kept saying every year, my children are driving me crazy about wanting to get a dog, and he even he even showed us <laughs> he even showed us this sign that they put up, uh, I think it was in the garage, about the children wanting to get a dog. And I, re and I remember um, him actually saying that his 13-year-old his, uh, son, Graham, years ago, used to send him pictures of, um, of dogs for adoption. He said... Graham used to send it to me every, every, every day, several pictures of dogs, and it was, he said, they were driving me crazy.
crazy. And a few, a few, um, when I was in the, the week before I went in the hospital with COVID, um, I think it was the sermon, I forget what sermon it was, um, but he said, he said at the end of the sermon, he said, okay, you, we're getting a dog, and the crowd was like, wow, and I said, oh, finally, because, like, every year, every so often, he would say, he would talk about their campaign, he turned, he, he said, um, he would talk about his son's campaign to get a dog, and it's hilarious. And they did get a dog recently. They called, they called him Boaz. He's so cute. I saw, um, I've seen him on the Holly Verdict channel, which is his wife. She has a channel now, and the, and the kids, and the dog. And he's so cute. Oh my god, the dog's so cute. But <laughs> anyway, I'm a goof. Okay. Uh, so anyway, this got me thinking about the power of uh, persistence and just never, uh, never to quit. And as the Lord said, there is someone out there right now uh, getting ready to quit and just um, not not pray anymore for a certain thing. And the Lord said, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. There's, there's, a, there's a power in persistence and there's actually when when you persist what you're feel what you're feeling why it gets so heavy is because there's a resistance to what you're doing if it's from God it you it it's some it usually has a resistance factor to it because you're feeling the way sometimes when you pray for something and pray for something and pray for something it it gets heavier not because you're not because you're supposed to quit but because you're about to receive breakthrough in that area and and when you are really persistent with something and when you're praying and praying and praying and not seeing it, and you're feeling like it's so heavy, it's so, um, it, it's too much for you to bear, keep on persisting because there's no, re uh, persistence always comes along with resistance. So, Persistence always comes along with persist with resistance, um, and like when I go back to Graham wanting a dog and his campaign for a dog, I go back to I uh, I think of like what Pastor said every day in different ways he was asking for a dog and he got the whole family involved including his mom about on this campaign to get a dog and that reminds me of just when you're praying and praying for something and if it's something you really want find someone to partner with and to pray with you about it, because the Lord said, where two or three are gathered, and there I am in the midst. So sometimes um, it helps to get two or three people uh, on praying for something. 
because when, when you are persistent, um, there is power in numbers, there is power in prayer, there is power in, uh, as I said, persistence and and Graham didn't stop when his dad said no I don't want a dog um, Graham didn't stop with no Graham just tried another way if the song didn't work maybe it was the emails if the emails didn't work maybe it was getting his brothers and sisters involved. Um, sometimes, if you don't pray, if you pray one way and that doesn't work, it sometimes um, a, another way would work. And just keep on knocking. Um, saying that, however, let me let me just say that you cannot manipulate God. Sometimes people try to manipulate God in prayer, like, if you don't do this, I'm not going to uh, come to church, or I'm, I'm leaving the faith, or whatever. You cannot manipulate God. God will not be manipulated. He, uh, he appreciates persistence, but when that persistence becomes a way to try and manipulate the situation to get your the outcome that you think you want, it will end up in your disaster. So do not try to manipulate the situation, manipulate people, or manipulate God. Because first of all, you won't get anywhere. Second of all, you'll have people mad at you and people won't want to help you. The Lord is looking for a genuine heart. And the Lord, the Lord likes nothing more than to answer your prayer. But the thing with God is He knows what is, um, what is best for you. You may think you know what is best for you, but he knows ultimately what is best for you, and he can see what's coming down the road. And quite often, we think we know what's coming down the road, but we have no idea. And because we have no idea, when God says no, it's usually for our good. We often say that God doesn't answer prayer. But I say God always answers prayer, but it may not be the way that you want the person to answer. I saw something interesting on, I think it was Facebook one time. He says, uh, God always answers prayer. He said, Sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no, sometimes it's not now. And we, sometimes we can't handle the not now, but sometimes that not now is keeping us from something. And sometimes we are not mature enough to handle what we think we can handle. Sometimes we're asking for something because we're looking at it on the out, on the inside, but we don't know the nut, the nuts and bolts of that thing. We don't know what it really takes. We see it from the outside, but we but we don't know what it takes to keep it like that. So we may ask for a stainless steel fridge and stove looking all beautiful and, and it's so oh my gosh that fridge and stove stainless steel looks amazing it's so clean it's so beautiful and awesome but not knowing that behind the 
teens, you have to get the shoe polish, not shoe polish, sorry, you have to get the special fringe polish, and you have to clean that thing every day, and every mark that you uh, put on it can be seen by everyone, so it takes work to keep that thing, it takes, it takes a lot of work and time and all of that to keep that pristine and clean, it doesn't just come like that, it takes a lot of work to do that, so to uh, clean that fridge and to clean those appliances, they look wonderful because people work at it. Sometimes we are praying for stuff that we have no idea about. We have no idea about, we, we, we like the way it looks, but the, but the work to keep it in the end is not really worth it. And then the, and it causes us stress and pain and it's just awful, it's just a lot of work to keep up, so maybe, yes, be persistent, but maybe God's not answering your prayer the way you want, because he knows the work that goes into it, he knows the, um, he knows the time, he knows what goes into it, and he knows that you're not mature enough to handle it. Back to my dog example, maybe the reason why it took Pastor Ferdy a long time, years to say yes to a dog, is not because he didn't love uh, his son and want to give him what he wanted, but he knew that um, beyond the cuteness and wonderfulness of a dog, it took work to feed it, to walk it, to take it to the vet. Never mind money and time. Um, and maybe he didn't know if his son was mature enough to handle it. So maybe it's not that God wants to keep things from you. Maybe he just knows the work that comes with it, and he knows your personality, and he knows where you are in your faith, and he knows whether you can handle it, and he knows if you'll if you get that thing, whether you'll give the glory to that thing, or uh, whether that thing will take his place, and. Um, but in that, still be persistent, but understand that there is a reason that God is, is maybe withholding whatever, and c because God knows his ultimate purpose for whatever it is, and he, he's working together He's working all things together for your good, because you are the call according to his purpose. Because everything in life, everything he gives you, everything he withholds from you is a part of his purpose. And you can't see it now, but... But he wants me to tell you right now that he is working it out. He is working it out, not in your favor, but in his favor. When you give your life over to the Lord, everything is about his favor. Everything is to give glory back to him because he's the ultimate thing. So, uh, so people say he's working it out in your favor? No, I say he's working it out in his favor.
and I think if we if we say um, he's working it out for a purpose, that's one thing. But I like to say he's working it out for his purpose because it's all about him, and that's what he wants. So the Lord is saying. Be persistent, but there could be a reason why he's not giving you that job, why he's not giving you a husband, why he's not finding a wife for you, or whatever you're praying about, or why he's not healing that person. There is ultimately a reason for for why God does what he does. And we just have to understand that he knows. And I know it's hard. It's very difficult when you're praying for something, especially for illness and like for someone who has an illness or whatever uh, to get healed, to understand why this person didn't happen why this thing isn't happening. And um, when, when I was in the hospital with, with uh, COVID, um, when I was at the rehab center, I remember one time uh, there was a time when, when after I watched uh, one of the uh, um, after I watched a sermon, I remember that, that that sermon caused me to just let everything out to God, all my disappointment. I said, Lord, why did I get COVID? Why didn't, why didn't you tell me to stay home? Why did I have to go to that assessment? Why did I have to do this? And he said, he said, ultimately, your story will give me will give me ultimate glory. And I said, whoa. And now, when I now when I think of that story and how how much it's helping people on YouTube, I think it's up to like twenty or twenty five now that people have. Um, watch that story and been blessed by it, now I can look back at it and say, yes, it was, it was good that I was, what was afflicted because it, it taught me so much about the people in my life and taught me so much about God and taught me so much about his faithfulness and grace. Um, so guys, so guys. Thank you so much for uh, being with me and be persistent. Never stop knocking. And those of you parents praying for your children to come back to the Lord, never stop knocking. Never stop knocking. Keep praying. Keep praying. And, and, and sometimes the more you pray for things, is the more they get worse because um, in persistence there is always resistance. 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 But that that resistance doesn't mean um, to give up. That resistance often means to push forward. You're almost there. So keep praying for that loved one. Keep praying for that child. Keep praying for that job. And while you're waiting, don't passively wait. Actively wait. Oftentimes, uh, we we think waiting is passive. Oh, I'm just waiting on God, and you're you're sitting on on your duck, not doing anything. 
sometimes God will just do things, but most times he requires your active participation. Waiting is not active. Wait, sorry. Waiting is not passive. It's active. We have to activate while we wait. So God puts his super on our natural to create something supernatural. And we've got to understand that. We've got to understand that that wait, wait um waiting is not passive. It's active. So while you're waiting for that job, go to school to better yourself. Take courses on that particular thing. Get around people in the community involved in that particular career that you can that you can learn. Because the more you learn about something, is the more is the more you'll succeed at it when it comes. Wait actively, not passively. And when when you're ready, one day, if you're persistent at it. God will do more than you could ever imagine. Imagine. He wants to do it. Don't think he doesn't want to do it. But he has his own reasons for not giving stuff to you the way you want it. Because it's not about you. It's about his ultimate glory. It's not about your purpose. A lot of people... Talk about finding your purpose or a purpose. But ultimately, it's about his purpose. He uses your talents, your gifts, your proclivities, your personality to to, uh, to push forth his purpose. And that will ultimately benefit you, but mostly... It benefits him. And I'm not saying that he doesn't want you to be happy, but remember that as you're persisting in prayer, your prayer is actually ultimately going to benefit him. You'll you'll be you'll be a better fish you'll be a beneficiary too, but ultimately it's about his purpose and furthering his kingdom. So guys, I I wanna thank you for being with me today. It's been awesome like just being with you and hanging with you. Uh, see you next week. I hope this sermon uh, encouraged you, I hope. Um, uh, this sermon strengthen you to persist in whatever you're doing and I also want to say want, want to say that God sees you he hasn't left you he's just working in the background and sometimes we think that God has left us but that's when he's working the most and I think if we just hold on and be persistent, that that ultimately his purpose will come through. And it might not be what we originally wanted, but it will be better, and it will be what he what he ultimately plans to bring out. Um. So. Be persistent, but know that his ultimate outcome may be different than what you prayed for. So, if you pray for a child and you can't have one biologically, 
maybe your child has to be adopted. Maybe that's the plan he has for you. Maybe your child right now is waiting for parents to, to love him or her, to teach him or her the ways of the Lord. And maybe that, maybe that's God's ultimate plan for you. His ultimate purpose to give him ultimate glory. So, God, so, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.